Hi everybody, welcome to my sewing room. So today's video is going to be more of a vlog style, sew with me type of video. And it's a very exciting one because I posted this fabric, my sewing wars fabric, on IG and asked if anyone had it. And the lovely Shell's Hearts Arts responded and we're doing sew twinning. How exciting, right? So, I really struggled to figure out what to make with this fabric because, as you can see, it's very busy. It has words, it has comic strips. And I didn't want to break up the fabric too much. I didn't want to do anything with that. I would then clip into the words or someone's face. So I really, really, really struggled. I think it's going to be a graphic t-shirt with this. This is a black cotton jersey. It's my favorite Robert Kaufman jersey, the Catalina knit. I have one yard of this. I'm going to make the named clothing in Narity. So what I'm going to do is cut out whatever graphic I like. And I'm going to use it basically as applique on the front and on the back of the graphic t-shirt. I'm also going to add some hardware to make it really fun. Some D-rings, some straps. And the most exciting part is I'm using Pontinets for the first time ever. We don't have Pontinets here in Barbados, but my lovely Caribbean soul sister, Marika, Overdrive After 30. Thank you so much, girl. She sent me two meters of black Pontinets from Fabric Mart, and it is just, it's just fabulous. It feels so luxurious, so soft. I washed all of these fabrics already. And I cannot wait to make me some jogger pants with this. I'm basically making a jogger set with a graphic tee. That's my plan. I've made the Inari tee before, but for the jogger pants, I'm actually trying a new company that I've never tried before. So I saw Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles post some leggings that she made from the company Green Style Creations. I've never heard of them before that, but when I was googling jogger pants patterns, that was one of the first companies that came up. So I was like, okay, it's meant to be Karina literally just posted about these. So I downloaded the brassy joggers. So the first thing I noticed about this company when I downloaded the pattern was that they have trimless pages. Like, amen, hallelujah. Where has this been all my life? <laughs> so I can't wait to put this together because I don't have to use the exacto knife, which is a godsend because I literally sliced into my thumb just last week. So I can't wait to assemble this. It's going to go so much quicker than it usually does. And then I can get to cutting my fabric. All right, so let me show you guys these trimless pages. By the way, quick side note, when you accidentally print incorrectly, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Just print on the other side of the paper, yeah? Okay, so I have the first two pages of the pattern here, pages 15 and 16. Have not trimmed anything. This is literally how it prints straight out the printer, very close to the edge of the paper. And what you do is you just line it up by the line and you literally just tape it. Then what you'll do is you'll take your pen or pencil and just connect whatever lines have a little bit missing. I'm not even going to bother to do that. I'll just do that with the scissors. If I, when I'm cutting here, I'll just cut straight across. So you continue to tape. Easy breezy beautiful. I just realized that for this inside thing, I'm going to be busting the tape with my teeth. Sorry, people, this is real life. So, according to the size chart, I actually measure in between the extra large and the 2XL. Crazy, I know. <laughs> this is why it's important to not look at sizes of the pattern because this pattern goes from extra extra small to 4x and I'm up at a 2x which is not normal but that's where my measurements put me so that's what I'm going with. For my actual jogger pants legs I am only 5'4 and the pattern is drafted for 5'7 so luckily they have on the pattern the approximate knee placement so I'm gonna run my measurements quickly and then measure the pattern piece and see where it is I need to take length away because I know I'm gonna take length away. But because they have the knee placement, this is gonna help me know if to take length from the thigh area or the calf area. Okay, so the solid line on the outside is the size 2X, which is what I'm making. What I did up here was I marked my 3 8 inch seam along from the waist down. And from that, 
I marked my two inch waistband marks. I know where my waistband is supposed to sit. And this line here is in the placement line. This is the length and or shorter line. On my own body, I measured from where the waistband should sit to my knee and I got 21 and three quarter inches. So now I'm going to measure the pattern piece from the waistband to the knee and compare measurements. And this one is 23 and three quarter inches, which means I need to take away two inches at the length and shorter line so that the person could hit my knee where it needs to. So now we're going to adjust from the knee line to the length line. And I'm making the ankle length with the cuff. This is the line for that hair. I've drawn up my 3 8 inch seam allowance and from that line, I've measured down the approximate length of the cuff, rough measurements here, three and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna measure from the knee placement line down to that line, it's about 16 and a quarter. And when I measured this on myself, it was 15. So I'm gonna just take away one inch from this part. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use this line here, the capri length line, as a length and a shorter length. So I'm gonna take away one inch from here two inches from above the knee placement line. That's a total of three inches that will be taken away, which actually works out perfectly because the pattern is drafted for somebody who's 5'7 and I'm 5'4 and that's actually a difference of three inches. So this is one of my all time favorite sewing tools. It's my quilting ruler. And I'm gonna use this to do my lengthening, well, shortening in this case. So this line here is where I need to take away the two inches above the knee. So I'm going to line up that line with my two inch mark on my ruler. So I'll line across and that's two inches there. I'm also gonna extend my length and shorten line just so I have a guide where I need to fold. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take length and shorten line and fold it down to my two inch mark. I'm gonna take this now and then I'll have to redraw the leg curves. So now when I'm cutting the pants, I'm gonna cut along this line here. I'm gonna do the same for the ankle and that's it for my length adjustments. So here's an update of how things went after I made those adjustments to the pattern pieces. I made a mock-up of the shorts version. It was huge. So I ended up having to grade from large at the waist to extra large at the hip and then from the knee to the ankle I graded back to large. So hopefully this is going to work because I don't have any extra fabric and I'm running out of time so I I'm not going to do another mock-up. I have all my pieces cut already. And that's the update. So I'm going to show you guys now how the pocket on this is applied because I really like how the pocket is applied. And then after the pockets, everything goes together really simple, just like any other pants pattern that you'd ever put together. This is my front pattern piece. And the first step to attach your pockets is to interface the slants with a 3 8 inch strip of interfacing and then we're going to turn it under. We're going to press that and top stitch that down. Okay, so I folded that under and top stitched using my twin needle. This is the pocket piece. And what I love about this pocket piece is that it's only one piece. Usually you use two pockets and you stitch on the outside and hair will be flapping. But with this one, what you do so you lay it under. I've put a little notch here from my pattern piece so I know exactly where my pocket is supposed to begin. So you're going to line up the edge of that pocket with the notch. And just align the edges here. What you're going to do now is top stitch. You're going to feel for the pocket. And you're going to top stitch 
all around the edge and that way you have no pocket flapping the pocket is attached to the pattern piece itself so I'm going to do is use a piece of chalk and as I feel for the pockets I'm going to just mark a line that way I could use my twin needle again from the top side of the fabric I've pinned around my pocket piece just to keep it in place so it does not move and now I'm going to feel and just come around with the chalk just so I have a guide I'm using my fingernail to guide me right so I have a line as a guide so now what I will do is I'll go with the twin needle close to the edge but I leave one or two millimeters just to be safe just to make sure I catch and come all the way around and then I'll show you guys what that looks like my top station is complete so I'm going to use a wet cloth to wipe off my chalk give it a good press and that's my pocket done and I can move on to the rest of the pants one quick note however because I did have to rip out my first twin needle stitch it was puckering the thread popped it was just a hot mess and then I remembered a tip that I learned is to stitch it on top of tissue paper and that helps and then we can just go in and just rip off the tissue paper this will come out in the wash or if you're a neat freak you can go in with a tweezer and pull out all these little things which I'm not about to do but you're a neat freak I don't have time for that so that's it so now I have perfect top stitching so I'm going to give this a good press and then I'm going to make the rest of the pants so I'm almost finished putting together the pants and I just have one more tip to show you guys quickly usually you would put on the waistband and then you'd use a pin and thread through the drawstring but what I've done is I've actually threaded it through already so that makes it easier because I don't really like using a pin so I just put it through and when you're attaching the waistband you'll just make sure that the drawstring stays inside and doesn't get caught in the seam that's it it's one day later I've had my photo shoot and now it's time for my final review of the Brassy Joggers by Green Style Creations so I have to say I'm extremely disappointed for a number of reasons it's not necessarily the pattern or it could be who knows this is the first reason I personally cannot stand a pattern that does not give finished garment measurements I think that if you're not given finished garment measurements at least you should say how much ease is included in the pattern that would be helpful because I had to print over and even when I graded the second time it was still huge I don't know if it's the fabric I'm gonna move on to that next but it could also be the pattern because when I measured the pattern pieces for like the ankle cuffs I knew right away that it was going to be too big for my ankle and I actually have chunky legs so I'm not too sure how exactly this pattern is drafted that's the first reason the second thing is I ain't about this ponty thing like if this is what ponty is I am not a fan right off the bat because I pre washed my fabric and everything and by the end of the photo shoot the pants grew to like three times bigger actually I have it here this is the pants no I can fit into one leg and this is from wearing it for just about an hour just to do a photo shoot the waist is massive the pattern says that you don't need elastic who are they kidding child you need elastic like even if i was to make this in a medium you need elastic to keep up the pants look at the size of the thigh i understand that the fabric grew but even before the thigh was still too big so it's a combination of the fabric and the pattern i don't know next time i may have to go down to a medium let me know if you think I did something wrong so I can know next time because I actually like the fabric it feels really nice but I can't wear the pants what I think I might have to do is cut them off into shorts 
all elastic in the waist and it's gonna be a home pants which really sucks but that is how this went for me I don't know I'm gonna try the pattern again with a more solid fabric that doesn't have as much stretch and we'll see what happens and of course I'll come back and let you know I'm gonna put out my pictures now so you can see how the photo shoot went and that is my review of the green style creations brassy joggers Thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like subscribe and comment below also check out my instagram at island socialist and my blog islandsocialist.com i'll catch you guys in my next one bye